As the IEC gears up for voter registration this weekend, studies have painted a bleak picture of voter apathy in the country. More than 14 million young South Africans are not registered to vote, raising concerns about declining participation in the democratic process. Our guest this morning um, is the CEO and founder of the Groundwork Collective, Mbali Ntuli. Uh, great to talk to you this morning, Mbali. Thanks very much indeed for coming on. This connection that sure. we need to make for, for, or that the youth needs to make between voting and changing our material circumstances, do you think that perhaps is one of the key reasons why there is this level of apathy? So I think first we need to begin by saying that there is a level of disillusionment rather than apathy. Mm -hmm. our, South, our South African populace, whether it's young people or not, go to protest every single day and try to organize outside of the formal democratic process. And that's because for them, democracy and elections have become theoretical. There's numerous studies showing that they don't believe that there's an efficacy between the elections and actually getting what they want to do. But their disillusionment is really with our political players and the way that they behave more than it is about them not actually wanting to take part in the system. Most of them would like to, don't really know how to do so in a way that is actually going to give them accountability. So as part of the blame must be shouldered at the, at the doors of our political leaders and the way that they put so many people off. Mm. It's also not just young people that are not coming to the polls. The age group between 42 to 59 is the second biggest declining uh, age group when it comes to voter participation. But of course, our worry is that if you don't get young people into becoming a cohort of people that take part of the electoral system, that you lose them forever. And again, yeah. studies show this. If you don't register and vote at least once, you're probably unlikely to do so. Yeah. So, so what, do you, what do you make of this cohort, 42 to 59, and the fact that there is this declining participation in that age group as well? Because that's the age group that would have voted in the first democratic election. Exactly. They're the ones that are probably holding the most disillusionment because they came into maturity when they would have um, actually seen 94 become a reality and would have at least had one decade of seeing real democracy. So for them, it's the, the kind of disillusionment that has become paralysis and apathy. And so they don't want to take part. And I mean, you see by elections like the one that was in Butterworth, where there were only 13 votes that were cast in a place where you know that there's significant wow. challenges and that people should be going out to actually make their voices heard. What's wonderful about the 18 to 35 group is that they make 70% of our population and they have no historical allegiance. So actually what we should be doing as a society is realizing that we failed to have civic education um, and, and, and start resetting it for this particular cohort so that next year when we celebrate this year's in democracy, we're also celebrating making sure that people know how to be active citizens and not passive and not feeling that they're paralyzed and worried that they don't have jobs or opportunities and that their civic duty is not just about registering to vote, mm. but then actually making sure that in between elections they know what to do to hold the people that they voted for accountable. Right, right. I, I want to focus on the 18 to 35 cohort in just a moment, but can, can we just go back to this 40 to 59 cohort in Bali because not only would, have, would these have been the people who voted in the first democratic election as you say saw t 10 years of democracy in action in our country and have steadily sort of seen a decline in, in their optimism for, for, for South Africa they would also have grown up under apartheid sort of towards the end of that um, 42 to 59 age H how does that sort of feed into the mindset that they have in 2024, ahead of the polls, um, you know, because they would, have, they would have grown up under apartheid, they would have experienced a whole range of issues as a result of apartheid, uh, waited for the release of Nelson Mandela, and, and gone through that 1980s, 1990s period as well. All of this is in their minds, right? How do they feel going into next year? I think the thing about democracy is that once it's there, people forget that they actually have to actively continue to make it work and to make it vibrant and to make it a democracy that works for them. So I think with this particular cohort, once they had democracy and they, and they saw that things were, were somewhat improving in South Africa, their disillusionment over the things that haven't happened, the corruption that we see, the hopelessness that we see with our uh, economy, has probably made them feel that they don't trust any of these political parties to get them out of this quagmire 
and their behavior, because voting and not voting is a behavior, yeah. is one of wanting to stay away. Of course, this is not to say the entire cohort yeah. um, stays yeah. away, because there are those who come out and vote strategically in their best interest. And as we know in democracy in this country, those who participate get to make the decisions. And so it is sad, and what you see, and where you see it predominantly happening, if you look at the by-election results, is in places where it needs the most service delivery. And when you look at the fact that South Africa has now the fifth lowest voting in the world yeah. it's very out of kilter with other countries so in the UK for example where you have Labour and the Tories or in America where you have the Democrats and the Republicans you can stay away if you know that it doesn't really matter on some of the big sort of policy situations or uh, conversations that are going to happen the basic needs, whichever party takes over, are going to be sorted. So you'll have water, you'll have electricity, the rest will be ideological fights. Yeah. South Africa is out of culture because that's not the case for us. We can't guarantee that we'll always have those things with the people that we voted for. And so instead of being more active and having a democracy where we really are fighting to make that we have become so paralyzed and we've bought into this idea that we can only ever change things every five years, whereas we actually have the most participatory democracy in the world. Yeah. Literally, yeah. our yeah. politicians yeah. have to come to us to make decisions about everything from the budget, the money in our wards, the CPF, the policing, and yet most people don't even know when their council is. And so you can't change and have a more representative government that works for you if we're not doing the basic civics and actually making mm. sure that people understand mm what to do in between elections. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I suppose this is where these cohorts meet, right? These, these voting blocks uh, in terms of the youth and then the older voters. This is where they meet. That, that sense of disillusionment and, or, or as you call it, um, yeah, disillusionment as opposed to apathy, right? Um, mm. And then that issue of consequences and accountability for the people who are in power. Those are the things that voters of all ages will have in common going to the polls next year. Definitely. And I think this is why we need to be having these conversations as the media, as civil society, to remind people that voting is not an individual, um, it's not an individual choice or is that an individual action rather yeah, yeah, because yeah. in South Africa we've also gotten into the sense of oh, will my votes actually count does it make anything democracy works because we all participate because we all do the group project together of course it's going to be difficult to say your one vote might make a huge difference even though it, it definitely does but once people understand that this is a numbers game there are more of us who are not in political parties who have to go and hire and fire these people than there are of them then you can put pressure on them to actually have to change things. If we could get every single young person who is eligible to register next year, to register by next year, there would be more of them than there are people that voted for the governing party last year. Then you make politicians really nervous and have to really work hard for your vote. But we haven't realized this because we act in silos. And that's what we try to do also in the Groundwork Collective, mm -hmm. is to try and have this education to teach people how strategy in terms of you being a citizen can actually help to make sure that you get the accountability and the things that you want individually. We have to be vigilant about the way that we're doing these things. Yeah. And we have to make sure that people have the option, and that's why this weekend is so important. You're not going to be able to have the option to even vote or not vote uh, if you aren't registered. Yeah, absolutely. An important message there is not just about going to the polls as well every five years. It is indeed about what we do in the interim. Um, very important weekend coming up this weekend uh, with registration taking place. So that is certainly the message. Go out, to, go out there. If you haven't already registered to vote, if you are a new voter, please do go and register. And Bali Nzuli, great to talk to you this morning, the CEO and founder of Groundwork Collective.